It's a fair cost to the Americans. The members of the gallery from the back. A second week in a row and a second fireball. That's Tracy and Nurse Veronica. We are no longer to wrestle men anymore. Was the ruling two weeks ago. That's right. What? What's Lollipop doing? Lollipop? That's April, that's April Pennington. That's April Pennington. And they're going to accept the challenge. What in the world's going on? Let them fight is what they're screaming. But black shirt security has come out to separate them. Oh, no. Yeah, but, but, oh, no. He, oh, he's all fighting if he's got care about wins or losses. This is about exacting some revenge. Oh, look at this. Oh, the tombstone pile driver head first into the steel chase with God. There ain't gonna be no rematch, Jeff. Let me just tell you one thing. The name of this show is Total Non-Stop Action. Amen. Oh, oh. Here we go. Let's see some of the action. <laughs> Now, who is this? Right, right out of the crowd, that, that's Joe Lantern with wheels over Edge, over Christian, over Rhino, and leaving his third turn in his TNA debut. Wait a minute, who's this? Oh, that's the champion, AJ Styles! Oh, my God! Oh, what a spectacle! Jim holds Jim again! Styles with a trash can shot to the head! Oh, no! Oh, man, what's he gonna do? Sets him up for the style! Uses the case. No, no way. Go so with the big no. no. Oh God. Legend has got the bad. No. no. Got him. Enough is enough. Stop this. Ain't gonna be no rematch. What an impact this man. Legend has had here in his TNA debut. Guess is he spitting up blood? He is. Jeff Jarrett is spitting up blood in the ring. Why did they hit him in the stomach? Unprotected. No. With the Jeff Jarrett has arrived here at the asylum. Jeff, let me ask you a couple of questions if I could. Last time we saw you, you were in the ring spitting up blood from the attack by Vince Russo and the legend. You're here against doctor's orders. They said, don't go near the asylum. Don't go near a ring, but we got to know, what's your medical condition? Scott, I'm not here to give you any medical conditions or updates. Last week, legend and Vince Russo, they want to play games with a bat. Well, you know what? It's my game tonight. And you tell them boys, batter up.
We'll factor that into the equation as well. Let's get things kicked off, JB. The opening contest for NWA Total Monster Action is scheduled for one fall. It is for the NWA Tag Team Championships of the World. Introducing, first of all, the challengers being led by Glenn Hill Kirby, the team of Simon Diamond and Johnny Swigger. You know, this is what we've been hearing all afternoon from Glenn Gilberti, how he's going to do anything and everything within his power to dismantle AMW, to take the tag title belts away. That's why I mentioned Glenn Gilberti is on a mission. And he joins us at the broadcast position as well for so this much, world tag title match. So much we want to ask you, Mike. organization as champions. That's unacceptable in my book. Now, a couple of cowboys did a couple of weeks ago for a match of the year. Oh, who, yeah, big deal. The match of, big deal? But Triple X carried them. Triple X carried these guys. You were, what, you were not watching the same match I was. Hey, bottom line, let me tell you something. These, these cowboys, these guys are not athletes. They're not championship material. Cowboys do chores. That's what cowboys do. They they shovel they shovel horse shit and stuff, and they do chores. That's what a cowboy does. Yeah. One thing we want to point out: AMW did not fall victim to the letdown factor last week. First title defense over Sonny Siaki and David Young. This just seven days after that incredible steel cage match, the match of the year that we're talking about, the title winner of Triple X. One thing I want to say though, Mike, I was talking with Storm and Harris before the match. This is a tag team they have never faced together, so that could be very important to Diamond and Swinger because Harris and Storm so many times they've done Triple X, they've seen Siaki and Young before like they did last week. They have never seen these two in the same ring with them at the same time. And one of the things, Mr. Gilberti, in the taglines, we talked about the experience edge oh, that this team you're associated with, yeah. Diamond and Swinger. I mean, America's Most Wanted have only been teaming for a year. Diamond and Swinger, I believe, started in 99 or 2000. And what exactly is your association with this team? Are you the manager? Hey, I'm, I'm an associate, man. I'm trying to get the troops in order here, okay? These guys deserve a title shot. They're experienced. They've been underrated. And let me tell you something. America Most Wanted, bottom line, they're an overrated tag team. Oh, I don't care what anybody goodness. says about them. They're overrated, okay? Simon Diamond and Johnny Swinger are excellent athletes. Under my guidance, I'm going to bring the tag belts back into my camp and get some stroke around here. One thing we want to mention, we saw Jeff Jarrett at the top of the program not giving an update to Scott Hudson about his condition. Jarrett's scheduled to be in a match tonight versus Legend. We're waiting word, however, on Jarrett's condition. I know he went to the doctor on Monday, and the doctor advised him not to wrestle. What did his gynecologist say? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm sorry. After was... what we saw last week, Don, I why are you laughing? I'm not laughing at that because that was Don't brutal. put that over. But that we saw funny. him attack with a baseball bat out here. Hey, it's baseball season. Summer's pastime. Jared gets what he deserves. AMW's going to get what they deserve here. Johnny, Johnny Springer, Simon Diamond. Oh, Dude, that's that's, look at that. There we go. Absolutely breaking down. Double team tactics by the team that I guess was put on the map in ECW. Simon Diamond, Johnny Swinger with a double team on the Wildcat, Chris Harris in the corner. Well, they they got Swinger, I'm putting him back on the map right now. They've obviously caught Wildcat Harris off guard right here. A very experienced Hey, well, well let me interrupt you, all right? It's not Wildcat, it's a cowboy. He's got a couple cowboys, period. One of the quick point of business, if I can, we apologize for billing Negro Casas and Shocker for tonight. They had agreed to be here, but we regret that they reneged on their agreement. We will continue to have an open-door policy here at MWA TNA, however. Back to the action. Back to the world tag title match. Harris has got to get the tag to Storm here. Or these two guys with their experience are just going to dominate this and make this a very short match, Mike. Yeah, let's talk about your AMW right now. Let's talk about the match in here. Let's talk about the match in here right now. Hell no. These guys got lucky when they won that cage match. They're overrated, period. End of story. 
All right, you made that point earlier. Lend some more expertise then. Off the snap Look suplex, another one. Yeah, the Look Simon series is what he calls it. The series of suplexes maintaining the contact, but only able to get a two count on Harris. Harris, let's, just... Let's talk about Simon Diamond and Johnny Swinger right now under my guys and how effective they're doing against AMW, the Cowboys. Can't deny that right now. They are totally taking control of this match and are dominating and... Chris Harris cannot even get over to score him to make the tag. Harris ducks the clothesline. Oh, oh, Explodes with a clothesline of his own. Well, to coin Sean Connery's phrase, <laughs> I'm ready to be impressed. These guys do not impress me. They are lucky. Hot tag to the Tennessee Cowboys. No, no, the oh, referee did not Will they end to Thomas Dixley the tag? Good call. Good call by the referee. What do you mean, good call? The tag was obvious in plain sight of everybody but, not but the, the referee. referee. But not the referee. The referee has to see it to make the call. There's common sense to me. You're the professor. Diamond right now and Swinger just giving it to Harris. I've never seen Chris Harris in this position like this just totally. There we go. Good, good strong left hand. Good jazz. Boom! And a big right hand, and he's leveled the Cowboys. It goes for the pin and gets a two count. I, I know that as part of, of what you're trying to do to reestablish yourself, has to have some kind of a connection to Vince Russo. You trying to get back into Russo's good graces again? I say, that's none of your business. I mean, you do try to put the pieces together. The bottom line is if you have belts, you got stroke around here. Okay, I'm trying to get the tag team belts in my camp where they belong and they can be used effectively. Yeah, we've seen that stroke that goes with the title belt. How about Russo with the power play? Oh, so beautiful move there again oh, by Harris. He's got to make the tag here right now. Come on, guys, get up. Trying get to get up, to the corner. Get up, Diamond. Hey, he's he's the tag here. Now there's the hot tag. Oh, oh Johnny Swinger on the receiving end of those ah. blows by the Cowboy. Certainly on the receiving end of that big flying forearm. To the ropes goes Simon Diamond. Boom! Elevated with the back body drop. Just hearing you say the word cowboy nauseates me. Well then, I might say it three or four more swinger. times. Oh, right about the cowboy right there. It's getting the cat. Oh. Beautiful. And then follows up with a slingshot cross body block to the floor. And I, here he goes, hey. Off the top. Beautiful. He hit the cross body off the top. Got two. Got out. There we go. You're not going to beat him with a cross body. You're not going to beat him with a cross body. What did you tell these guys, Glenn, on how to prepare for America's Most Wanted? That's none of your business. I'm not going to give away my secrets, you moron. Oh. Super kick. Got him. Push the leg. Here's two. Here's... Oh, no. That's two and a half. Just count them enough. There we go. Come on, Simon. Come on, Swinger. Two on one. Storm to the ropes. Go. Oh, no. By James Storm. Talk about a counter. Talk about a perfect reversal. Exactly what we saw from James Storm. Tag to Chris Harris, now the legal man. Come on, get your second win back, guys. Harris springs off the rope. Oh, no. Left arm lariat. Here's the cover. Referee Thomas is out of position. He should be out of the ring. Get the man out of the ring. Good move. Good move by Simon Diamond. Harris had him. Had Johnny Swinger pinned right there. Andrew Thomas again out of position. AMW oh. had the win. They were going to retain we go. the tag belt. Whoa. All right. All right. It's over! Oh, he got him! There. Great Pin team. it the swing of the finger! Got him. No. Come on! One Have thing you that. can't deny, Mike, is Swinger and Diamond are a very fertile tag team and would make great champions! How fast are the referees making slow counts? Out of position making slow counts! Diamond and Swinger gonna try and set up a double team move. Simon Diamond mounts the top rope. Broken up, however! Oh, no! And Harris elevates oh, Swinger to the apron. And the South Pole levels Come him on. and sends him out. Come on, referee, regain some order. Action on both sides of the ring in this opening World Tag Team title matchup. Storm mounts the top rope. Oh, great move by Storm. He has been so impressive in this match. Brought him in with the Hurricane Run against the oh, No, you're not going to beat him no, with that. Only two. What in Diamond, get out of there. What intestinal fortitude and bravery by my men. Swinger, oh, no. That one was on the button. They do it with the 40. Here it comes. They've been using the super kick to set up the death sentence. Is that what they're going to do here? What's the deal with Gilberti slamming down his headset? Here it is. Going to hook him up for the death sentence. Gilberti. Gilberti just. Oh. oh, wait a minute. Referee didn't see it. He threw Harris all the way out to the floor. That's what are you doing, Gilberti? Come on, the hell are you doing? 
doing? I'm just doing my job. That left Storm in there by himself. Oh, no. Keep an eye on Gilberti. Somebody get a camera on Gilberti. He's got it. There he goes. Roll up in the ring. Storm's got it, but again. Andrew Thomas out of shape. Gilberti just smashed Storm with a chair. Oh, no. Oh, no man. way. Dare I say my best 
my best friend. A man who should be at home with his baby tonight, but he's here. Here is the chosen one, Jeff Jarrett. going to talk about what an impactful debut that that man legend made one week ago on this program saving Vince Russo from the Jeff Jarrett attack and oh, wait a minute here uh, yeah, oh. this, is, this is hilarious Vince Russo and his Jeff Jarrett impersonation nice outfit Mike where can we get one of those That's sick. absolute lack of respect for Jeff Jarrett yeah, especially on the heels of what these jerks did last week with the baseball bat attack. Talk about rubbing salt in the wounds. Those two beautiful New York ham hocks. 
right now, baby. Let me have that. Uh, and here oh, comes Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. And look at that. He's dressed for Russell. I guess Russo and Legend didn't see him come in. And I guess he's not going to listen to those doctor's orders that advised him not to wrestle oh, tonight. Oh, what a kick there by Jarrett. And he just spins him out of the ring. Oh, look at Russo backing up the ramp. Yeah, Russo bails, heads up the ramp, and now it's Jarrett's opportunity oh. for revenge. Oh, Legend Whoa. caught him, though. Whoa. Oh. oh, dropped him across the knee with the backbreaker. Six foot five, 270 pounds. Oh. Oh. Springs off the ring rope, crashes down across the chest of Jarrett. Right into the midsection, which they pummeled last week so brutally. Look at this, and you can see the... Yeah, you can see that the ribs have been taped up. Oh, he's just... But you know what? Jeff could only take so much, Mike. He can only take so much. Oh! Legend charges at Jaren, who fortunately is able to sidestep him, and Legend goes shoulder first into the safety rail, and Jaren fights back, catches his jaw with the right hand. Jaren's got a chair, one of our chairs here from the broadcast position. Oh! oh. Crashes that down across the back of Legend. And here we go, the brawl, much like last week, has spilled out into the asylum. This is all got a little payback right here, Mike. He's not forgotten for the last week. He's been either in the hospital or home, taped up in bed. Now think about that rib injury. With every breath that Jeff Jarrett has been taking for the last seven days, he's reminded of how serious those internal injuries were from the baseball bat shot from Legend and Russo. I guess Jared right now feels like the, the pain's not going to get any worse. So he might as well take care of Legend right here. And he's going to fall in right up. Right up into the seats here at the asylum. And repeated shots to the back with the chair by Jared on Legend. Again, like I said, I least he had no idea that Jared was going to make it here tonight. Look out now. Oh. That's from well up in the in the stands. Legend appeared as if he's gonna try and body slam here. Oh, 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 oh. He's going right, he's going right off that top set. He thought he did this. He did it. He did it. Wow. I mean, Don, that's, that was that's gotta be what what would you say, Don? That's gotta be about what a 15, 15 foot, 20 easy, foot drop. 15, 20 foot drop to the floor. Jared is a man possessed. That's oh. not enough. He's he, I'm amazed that Legend has even up and on his feet at this point after that kind of a fall. Well, you've got to give that to oh, Look, you can see the pain on Jared's face. Yeah. Trying to, to somehow mask the pain oh. and, and forget about it, but he can't. Trying to fight through that pain. Chair shot to the back by Legend, who is dragging Jared by the hair. Oh, somehow, I don't know how Legend got the momentum back after that fall he took. But Jared's still fighting back. Jared not to be denied. Holy Repeated rights, and he's got a chair again. How many? Oh, I'll tell you what, Legend's taking some chair shots right here. Right here behind us, Mike. Be careful. The... Oh, a kick by Legend right into the groin area there of... Oh no! Oh he's, no! He's got Jared's head wedged in between those two oh. on the safety rail, and he came with all of his force with the boot and kicked the head of Jared. I mean, there's no place for the head to go. There's no, no place for it to move. He's already got his midsection. Oh, oh he's, Jared is just bloody. Right, he's oh, wide what open. What 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 Jared has been split wide open, and Legend oh, continues the assault. Somebody come out here and stop this! position and Legend goes over the guardrail. Jesus, isn't enough enough already? I'll tell you what it's enough. Oh, man. Somebody, security. somebody come out right here and stop this. Right here at the broadcast table. Jared says face first. God. I mean, the courage that Jared showed to even come out here was one thing, but Jared, it's too much. Oh, he's fighting back. And look at Jared fight back. Oh, oh he's our ringside broadcast table covered with the blood of Jeff Jarrett. Our monitor is covered with his blood. And Legend continues the assault. Oh, oh God. look at that. God, he just won't stop. Oh, this. 
this rivalry between Russo and Jared is is gone beyond anything I've ever seen. Come on, this is beyond the point of trying to embarrass somebody. Jared oh. in severe, severe trouble. Somebody get out here and stop this. Now what? Now he's going no. to get a chance. Enough's enough! Come on already! And you'll notice Russo's nowhere to be found. No, but you know that he plotted this. You know this is all part of his plan. Jared just he, trying to, to muster the strength even to get to his feet. And as soon as he gets to his knees, he's cut off by legend. He's trying, but the pain, wait, the pain, look at him, he's geeked. Everything. And he did it. How did he do it? Sometimes when the pain's so great, you know it can't get any worse, Mike. You Jared, can't get any worse. Unbelievably fighting through the pain. Able to back body drop legend to the chairs. Lead over the stroke. Oh, shot to the ribs, a cheap shot. Reversal by Jarrett. Oh, he did the stroke right into the chair. Legend took it face first. Oh, Jarrett is just bleeding profusely. What a wild, impromptu brawl. Oh, this is a ball. There's a little payback. payback. We want payback. Exactly what we want. This is what happened to Jarrett a week ago when they used the tape to tape him, and he was defenseless. And they beat his midsection with a baseball bat. The internal injury. And look at Jarrett getting revenge. Normally I wouldn't condone this, but Mike, I'm sorry, this is justified. Yeah, it's all about payback at this point. Jarrett trying to get the oh. other piece of tape from his, from his other wrist. And Mike, this is exactly what we saw. This was the position that Jarrett was in one week ago. Where he was defenseless. And yeah. on the condition all right let's send you backstage Scott Hudson standing by with the X Division champion Chris Saban go Scott champ last week we saw the world heavyweight champion take Frankie Kazarian and it fold him up like a pair of pleated pants now he calls himself Frankie the future Kazarian you're the future Chris Saban but I gotta say 
you've got the X Division title. I think you've got a claim to that name. But you can't ignore a man like Frankie Kazarian. Obviously, we all know who the real future of this business is. And obviously, it's the man with the gold, Chris Sabin. Now, there's nothing that I would love more than to give Frankie Kazarian a shot at my X Division title. But in case you haven't noticed, the guy's on a losing streak. And we all know in this business, losers do not get shots at titles. So what Frankie's going to have to do is go out there in that six-man match, and he's going to have to prove something to me. Okay. And then maybe he gets 10, I don't know, 15 more wins. Then maybe I might consider possibly thinking about giving him a shot at my X Division title. Maybe, Scott. Maybe. 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 Scott. maybe. That, that six-man action still to come. Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe, he's the man who built this house. This is prime time, Elix Skipper. This is my house. I built this house. Pound for pound, I'm the best wrestler in the world. the champion? He was undefeated until that loss, and think about it, Saban, Trinity, everybody interfered, cost him that first loss. The following contest is a six-man, six-way exhibition elimination match. About to make his way to ring, first of all, introducing from South Beach, Kid Romeo. And we certainly have been impressed with Kid Romeo here on TNA. I think he really belongs right in the mix of the X Division title picture. Absolutely, he, Mike. If he wins this, he's going to be the number one contender. Competitor number two. From St. Louis, Missouri, this is Matt Seidel. Another one with a brilliant future, yes. just 20 years of age, already three years as a pro. Started keep, off wrestling at 17. Keep your eye on this kid. Lou. 22 years of age, three plus years as a pro, Alter Boy Luke, the next competitor in this six-way match. From Hearts Unknown, this is Deliria. Well, there you see Delirious, and Matt Stryker joins him as well. Delirious patterns his style after Sabu and the Great Muda. Matt Stryker! Stryker, I guess, the elder statesman of this group, 28 years of age, a five-year pro from Cincinnati's Heartland Wrestling. And from Los Angeles, California, Frankie the Future, Kuzarian! It's very obvious how impressed we've been with Frankie Kazarian. How about the recent non-title match where he defeated X Division champ Chris Saban? Saban didn't point that out earlier. Obviously, that still sticks in Saban's crawl because he threw those jabs at Kazarian earlier tonight. Primetime Elix Skipper joins us at the broadcast position. We have to talk about that incredible match a couple of weeks ago. The Steel Cage bout, Triple X, and America's most wanted primetime. That's right. That match was easy because that's what I do. What an incredible match it was. Some call it the, the match of the year, Mike, and I, I can't deny that. It was something to see in primetime. You were so incredible in that ring. That match was easy. The guys in the back are talking about trying to top that. It, it can't be done, and if they try to top it, I'll just do what I do. But being the best Matt wrestler in the world, pound for pound, that's what I do. 
And can we presume, since you're out here, to help us on color commentary for this X Division matchup, that you're interested in a shot down the line at the X Division title? You know what, I didn't think about the X Division title, but on my way to getting the heavyweight title, I just might get that title. But back to the cage match. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, Mike. I wasn't even 100% that night. I was off, actually. I was off? Yeah. I wasn't 100%, but the fact that I'm pound for pound the best wrestler in the world, I can have a bad night and still have the best match of the year. And this matchup is an elimination match. So it will be fought with team rules as we see Stryker go for the pin attempt on Delirious and gain a two count. Mike, did you know uh, I'm putting on a little bit of weight here? Felix, if we can, if we can concentrate on the task at hand, which is this six-way match, let's, Mike, let's give Mike, these guys in the ring their just... you called me out here to talk, why are we talking about this match? I didn't call you out here. Mike, if you don't know how to treat a pound-for-pound pound best wrestler in the world, I don't have time for you, because you obviously forgot what time it is, and that's prime time. If you don't have time for me, I don't have time for you. Well, Mahi Straw, Mahi Straw cradle roll-up by Kazarian is... Prime time just got ticked off. Didn't want to discuss this match at all. I mean, he made his point, but I mean, at some point we have to concentrate on the action in the ring in this match. Prime time just literally got set up, Mike, and left. Well, Mike, we can't worry about that right now. We have got to get back to this match, and it's going to be something. Yeah, let's concentrate on the in-ring action. Delirious! Wow! Look at the elevation. Missile drop kick on Ultra Boy Luke, hit by Delirious. Well, that's what I love about the X Division, and it's what I love about TNA. You talk about all. Extinction there, match by down. And hit the crossbody block and gains a two count. Wow. It's an open door policy for this young talent, and we're looking for a new number one contender. We've seen Kid Romeo, we know what he can do. Oh, there he is! Yeah, almost as if on cue. We know what he can do, and he just connected first with a clothesline. And then a big right hand to jack the jaw of Alter Boy Luke and back to the offensive Kid Romeo. I'm gonna tell you something, I don't know that Kazarian should even be in this match after the after the the match he had with AJ last week and, and, and there at the end of the match and we saw how brutal it was and he somehow survived it, but you gotta give him credit for getting in it. But this is a lot of young talent out here, Mike. Did and you another, see that move by Sidell? Well, I did, and another two count for Sidell. You mentioned Kazarian in the attack last week. Think about that. After the match, Russo hitting it with, oh! with the baseball bat in the ribs, and you see that Kazarian even has his ribs taped up. Oh, great move there by Romeo. Snaps off the head scissors on Sidell. Shoots him off into the ring ropes. Sidell able to duck the clothesline, and whoo, wasn't able to avoid the contact with that. Go oh! to the midsection, and then released overhead, just tossed away. Romeo with him, puts the leg, and gets a two count. Kid Romeo showing his experience over Sidal. I'll tell you what, we've talked about Kid Romeo. Every time we've seen him here recently in TNA, Mike, he's been so impressive, hasn't he? He would be a great contender for the X Division. And if he's successful in the oh. tonight, he will be the number one contender. Slingshot in, leg drop, and Kazarian goes for the pin, and another near fall, getting the two count. Look at Kazarian's up on the top rope. Oh, and Sidell made a great move there. He caught Kazarian right in the rib section where he's taped up. Sidell had to do something to get out of there. And you can see how Kazarian is hurting badly in his ribs. And pretty obvious as Stryker immediately comes in, connects with a knee to the midsection, and then the front suplex hanging in over that top steel cable, dropping him rib first. I think everybody realizes here in this match, they've done their homework. They saw that he was nailed with the baseball bat by Russo last week. They see that the ribs are taped. They're going to try and take advantage of that. One thing about this match, oh, 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 a suicide dive. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable by Delirious. Even though Sadell jumped over him, Sadell didn't stop and went right after Kazarian. Oh, oh great kick there by Alter Boy Luke. Takes down Sadal, and now he's going to fly. Oh, beautiful. Flip dive over the top by Luke. Still everyone in this elimination match. Who's the first to be eliminated? And Sidal, he's going to fly. No, oh. smart move by Romeo on the opposite side of the ring. He was hiding behind the cameraman and just waiting. He knew Sidal would want to do it. Hook the leg, now comes flying off. From the middle rope, up and over the top rope, and down to the floor. Here we go. Six, he's making six for six. 20-year-old kid, Matt Sedal. Oh, oh, to perfection with the moonsault from the top all the way down to the 
floor. And then in the Olympics, that have been 10.0 across the board, Mike. Kazarian back in. Kazarian goes for the pin and only a two count. You know, we call for replays in this match, but there's just no, there's no opportunity you to. Can't miss there's one. no time. This is a uh, elimination match, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's, these guys are not going to stop. Oh, what a move! What a move here by Sunhill! And Sadow was able to catch Stryker in this battle of the mats, caught him with the kick as he was spun over in midair. Drop kick, Gray Stryker. Can Sadow follow up? Goes for the cover. The lateral press and a two count before Stryker kicks out. Nobody's been eliminated as of yet. So much on the line. Everybody wants to. Oh. <laughs> you saw that. I saw Kid Romeo stopping Stryker and avoiding the contact. Now the catapult. Oh, no. oh. Romeo's Romeo got to go. Landed him. Last chance to Matt Seidel has him eliminated. First elimination is Matt Seidel. Oh, boy, Luke just slammed Kid Romeo down. Calls that the holy driver. Half Nelson into a power bomb. And Alter Boy Luke to make his way through the ring ropes. Oh, check this moonsault out. Oh, calls that the halo. Here's one, here's two. No, shoulder up by Romeo. Well, I guess this match has epitomized everything that TNA stands for. Yes. Total non-stop action in this six-way X Division contest. Did you see Romeo switch that midstream in the air like Throw him down face first, hooks the leg, and gets a two count. I'll tell you what, if Kazarian's smart, he will try to stay out of that ring as much as possible with the bruised ribs from last week. Well, that would actually be the key to success. Stay out as long as you can and survive in this kind of a match. Do not get eliminated. Don't put yourself in a position to be eliminated. Whoa! Phenomenal move that time by Delarius. I'll tell you what, we've seen, Mike and I have had the pleasure of seeing him at TNA Explosion so many times. Keep right on this kid. He's crazy, he's wacky, but he's exciting. Six straight weeks on our syndicated show, Explosion, for Delirious. Oh! Rolls yeah. in now, he's got the pin attempt, and Kazarian is able to kick out. Oh, oh my God. kick! Wow! Oh my God! Jumping kick, shades of the Yakuza kick that time by Kazarian. Who follows up the advantage of the corner, but Delirious is going to go to the good, top rope. Good move risk. by Delirious, though, to get out of that ring real quickly and throw Kazarian off of his move. From the top. Oh, oh falls back, good. maintains the contact, oh, and get out him! That is uh, number two, wrestler number two that's out, and we're down to the final four. Oh, great move there by Stryker. Lufez pressed by Matt Stryker. Oh. Oh. And the knees of Kazarian. Oh, what great timing by Kazarian to get the knees up, Mike. Stryker went for his patented move, the Stryker salt, but you're right, knees able to get up and stop that move by Stryker. Back into the offensive now. Stryker sends Romeo to the ropes. Great move there by Stryker, just... Whoa! Power oh, slam, this. pin, two, no! That's what I love about the X Division, Mike. You don't only, only see the great agility and the high-flying moves. These guys have the power moves, too. And with their speed, they come down with such force. And now Romeo has Stryker in a precarious position. Stryker hooking the top rope. Oh, and Stryker just, oh, he overpowered him that time and stopped Romeo. Pushed him into the corner. Oh, great knee to the ribs. Opportunity now for Stryker to take advantage of this opening. Repeated clubbing blows to the back. Going top row. Oh, look at Kid Romeo's got him. No way! Oh, God. Here's the pin attempt. And one, and two, and got him. Matt Stryker has eliminated. What a move there by Romeo, Mike. That was impressive. Kazarian immediately in. Connects with the missile drop kick on Romeo. Jumping back elbow. Are we down to the final two now? Ah, we're down to the final two. And Romeo and Kazarian. Come on! Oh, drove him down to the map. Back in the future for one, for two, for three. The winner! And the new number one contender for the X Division Championship of the World, Frankie the Future! Kazarian does it again. Wow. We're going to try and get an update on the condition of Jeff Jarrett if we can. We want to understand Scott Hudson standing by in the back. But what's the story on this?
What's Chris Saban doing out here? Ah, uh, he's out here just to kind of pose and show everybody the belt that he owns. He's the X Division champion. So we're going to send it to the back for an update on Jarrett's condition with... But now all of a sudden we see Saban coming out here unannounced and well, he, I guess he's going to explain his position. All right, Frankie, you proved something to me tonight. You proved me that you're a worthy contender. So I tell you what, son, you will get a title shot. And it's going to be right now. What? What is he? He just said he'd give him a title shot right now. He said he, he earned it. He's going to give it to him. Well, that, I mean, think about how low that is to save him. The guy's just wrestled six men, Mike. This is unbelievable. Well, he just wrestled five, and now this is the sixth. Oh! And totally taking advantage of the injured ribs of Frankie Kazarian. Oh, Immediately on the attack with the ribs, and now sends him into the steel ring post. Oh. Got him positioned around that steel post. Oh, it's obvious that Saban still cannot get over the fact that Kazarian actually beat him in a match. Yeah, non-title match a couple of weeks ago. Kazarian holds the win over Saban. I mean, there is no way. Division champion. And I'm a Chris Saban fan. This guy's got all the talent in the world. You don't need to do it this way, Mike. Totally focusing his offensive attack on the previously injured ribs of Kazarian. And Saban is going to take him up. No oh, hey, Kazarian can't Beautiful move there by Kazarian. But look at him. You can see him writhing in pain, Mike. Desperation move. Hitting that released overhead suplex. Well, how much gas can he have left in the tank? It's got to be on E. The tank has got to be on E for Kazarian, but look at him get to his feet. Look at him fight back. Think about this, Mike. Two weeks ago, he faced Saban. A week ago, he faced the phenomenal AJ Styles. Then today, he took on five guys, and now Saban. Six men tonight. you got to give Kazarian credit for the... I'm going to borrow a, a, a phrase from Gilberti. The intestinal fortitude. Yeah, the gutsy performance in that time. He went slingshot with... Going for a cross body block, but Saban was able to get the knee in the path of Kazarian. I'll tell you what, it's obvious to me that Saban fears Kazarian. That's why he's doing this. He said he'd give him a title match. And he comes out and gets him when he knows Saban's not at full strength. I mean, Kazarian's not at full strength. Oh, look at this. Attempt at the sunset flip is blocked. Kazarian goes for the pin, but only able to get a two count. Oh, Saban put the knees right in the ribs. And the X Division champ, who agreed to put up the X Division title here in this impromptu match against Kazarian. Kazarian against oh, all odds as the challenger. He's going to try and go for that one-man Spanish fly that he calls the flex capacitor. Oh, oh but it's locked. That was the move he was going for. Oh, he's got him. Wait a minute, Steve. Wait a minute. He stopped another one of his famous moves, and he's going to take him up to his shoulder now. And oh. Like a bag of potato chips right into the turnbuckle. Charges, sends him across the back of his head, making contact whiplash style with the top turnbuckle. Oh, oh there's the future shock. Dropped him oh. down. Fisherman Buster applied, oh, and there's no. the three count. The winner of the match, and still exhibition champion of the world, Chris Saban. Well, Chris Saban, bottom line, retains the title. But that isn't the full story. Standing by in the back, Scott Hudson. And I understand we're going to get an update on the condition of Jeff Jarrett. Scott? Guys, Jeff Jarrett has been severely injured. At this point, we know the internal injuries have been aggravated. We, we don't know the extent of the injuries. We know that an ambulance has been called here to the asylum. But now... Jeez! We didn't get him the first time. I don't want to walk. I don't want to walk. I just want to run. I didn't finish it the first time. Oh, man, what is going on again? They're beating him. I don't want to walk. Well, we went to the back for an update on Jarrett's condition. Russo and Legend continue their assault. Russo is totally out of control, Mike. This guy is sick. He needs help. Oh, this is just wrong. He needs help. It's Russo is meant. Did you just see that no. attack? That was sick. I mean, following up on everything that we've seen. That was criminal. And, and now what? Now we're being interrupted by Lollipop in the ring? I don't know what's going on. 
lab. You know, something got started last week, and now uh, we didn't get to finish it. I know the people here and the payers at home all want to see what didn't get finished last week, and I know I want to do it. So why don't you come out here? We'll give the people what they want. But she's calling out, I guess, Tracy and Veronica. We saw the, the pull-apart brawl one week ago tonight, and, well, here is Nurse Veronica. Well, I hope they don't pull it apart now. I know you, you, you were upset that they were well, stopping the cat fight last week. I mean, week. if they want to, you know, if they want to get it on, let's get it on. A lot of men out here in this crowd. That looks like Lollipop's getting ready for battle. What in the world? There she goes. And, it's and here we go. It is on up the ramp. Wait, no, what in the just, world? Just as this gets started, you see April Pennington, the other TNA dancer, coming down here as well. Come on. And again, Black Shirt Security comes out to stop I the mean, cat fight, the potential cat fight stops again. Well, this is, it takes security forever to get out here when we need them. And then here when we got a little harmless cat fight, they get out right away. Ah, oh, let them fight. the consensus opinion of the crowd here at the TNA Asylum. Let them fight. But security separates them again. And again, we're denied. All right, it was earlier today when I had the opportunity to sit down and get some answers to the questions from Father James Mitchell. Roll the tape. Father James Mitchell, it has certainly been an auspicious return for you to TNA. The way I look at it, you're batting a thousand. Two weeks, two victims, as both Raven and CM Punk have felt the wrath of your fire. Precisely, Mike, hell's a-popping in TNA right now. The franchise Shane Douglas keeps referring to this deal with the devil that he made with you. Please explain the association that you have with Douglas. It's really very simple. Shane Douglas wanted to get into TNA, but they wouldn't let him. And he told me that if I assisted him, he would take care of Raven. You see, he and I both despise Raven, albeit for two very different reasons. But since he's arrived, we have essentially figured out a way to kill one bird with two stones. Well, what's the story? What's behind this hatred that you have for Raven? Oh, there's a litany of reasons, Mike. Just on the top of the list, the fact that he's a whiner. For years, we've heard, what about me? What about Raven? He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, the son of a wealthy publisher. Now, what has he had to complain about? He's had a better run in this wrestling business than most people. But he doesn't get his way. What's he ever lost? What has he ever really lost? A match or two, Mike? An argument with a promoter? You know what real loss is? He's never felt it. I have. I suffered a career-threatening wrestling-related injury, and I didn't whine and complain like he did. Well, tell us about that injury. Three years ago, when I was working for the ECW promotion, a device that I used to throw fire exploded in my hand. I nearly died. I went into shock. I had a hole in my abdomen big enough to stick my finger through. I lost part of my fingertip. I have permanent nerve damage. I can't walk without a cane. It's excruciating. I felt real loss, and as a result of that, once the dust had cleared, the smoke had settled, after the $100,000 medical bill came in, I lost everything I'd worked so hard to get in my life. I lost my wife, I lost my home, I lost two luxury automobiles, my family, my pets, everything. I would bottomed out. But, unlike Raven, unlike Raven, did I descend into an abyss of drug abuse? No. Did I have to hide under a wet Prozac security blanket just to get through the day? No. I took Nietzsche's dictum that that which doesn't kill me only makes me stronger. And I rebuilt myself one day at a time, and I'm stronger now than I've ever been and stronger than Raven could ever be. And isn't it interesting that when I think of you and Raven, I, I first off think of the similarities, the parallels that you have, and one of those has to be mind control. Mind control. You think Raven is capable of mind control? How hard, how much mental ability does it take to control a bunch of screwballs, dropouts, disenfranchised losers. That's not mind control. And in, besides that, in order to control others, you've got to be able to control yourself, Mike. If Raven had any self-control, 
he wouldn't have become the filthy, junky dirtbag that he was for all those years. One of the other similarities between you and Raven is the fact that you both have been known to, let's say, play with the dark side. There's the key word, play. That's the difference between Raven and myself. He plays at it. It's shtick for him. For me, it's very real. And I find it very offensive, Mike. When I watch TNA and I see Raven sitting in a room with a pentagram surrounded by little candles, like he's performing some sort of spell, I find that very offensive. He doesn't know what he's playing with. He has no idea, Mike. What's he going to do next? Wear an Ozzy Osbourne shirt? Spin heavy metal records backwards, he's clueless. He has no idea of what he's tapped into. And the bottom line of that is, Mike, that he didn't conjure up little boogeymen when he did that. He conjured up something a hell of a lot more dangerous. My wrath. And he's going to feel it. He's going to learn what real pain and real suffering and real loss is. And there you see what happened one week ago. The fireball in the face of CM Punk. The gathering is in the ring and Julio's got the microphone. Shane Douglas, it's time you get your butt out here right now. Let me tell you how it's going to go down, my friend. You, my friend, you got in the ring with Raven and you sent him back and he's burnt. And I tell you what, CM Punk's one of my best friends. And you sent him burnt to the hospital as well. Well, I'll tell you how it's going to go down right now. You get your butt to the ring. You realize right now, you made a pact with the devil. You made a deal with the devil, but it wasn't a very good deal. I made a deal with Raven. I told him I'd stick up for him until he was ready. So get your ass out here, or I'm going to wipe mine with your keister. Open challenge to the franchise, Shane Douglas and his opponent. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, this is the franchise, Shane Douglas. And immediately answered, and Douglas is ready for one-on-one -on -one competition. You know, we had anticipated Raven being here tonight, but as Julio just mentioned, the injuries have sidelined him for yet another week, Don. Well, I'll tell you what, Shane Douglas has made no secret of the fact that he wants... Raven out of here, he wants the gathering out of here, anybody associated with Raven, he did an alliance with Mitchell to prove it, I mean like I said he made a deal with the devil Mike. And certainly we just heard from Father James Mitchell supplying us with plenty of answers to a lot of the questions that we've had about the, the specific hatred that these individuals have for us. Great move there by Julio. Up the vertical suplex takeover, Julio back to the advantage now using the t-shirt to throttle Douglas. One week ago when Shane Douglas won that Clockwork Orange House of Fun match over CM Punk, taking a page right out of Raven's book, winning Raven's specialty match with his own brainchild, and then post-match as we've seen on the videotape, Father James Mitchell with the fire, the fireball thrown in the face of CM Punk. De Niro. Julio De Niro has totally taken control of this match from the beginning. You know, he's been thinking about this. Oh, he is dominating Mike. Off the back heel trip, the lateral press, Douglas gets the shoulder up at two. Well, as far as Raven and the Gathering have been concerned, Shane Douglas has been a huge problem for them ever since he debuted here some four weeks ago. You remember it was that three-way match. Raven was cost an opportunity at the NWA World's title when Douglas came in and interfered, pulled Raven out of that match. And the problems have escalated since that point. Of course, Douglas made it known that he felt like he'd gotten rid of that NWA title belt years and years ago, 10 years ago, and felt like Raven was trying to resurrect it, Mike. Yeah, it was 10 years ago when he buried the NWA World title, blaming Raven for trying to help resurrect that championship. But how impressed are you with Julio in this match? Oh, absolutely, and again, it took a rake in the eyes there by Douglas to try to get some momentum, but Denise is not going to let him have it. Off the full Nelson slam, legs hook, and another near fall. Smart move, I think, at this point by the franchise, Shane Douglas. Roll out of the ring. Whoa! Whoa. Look at him fly! Didn't roll out far enough, though, did he? I'll tell you what, Julio's been impressive in the ring. Had some great matches with D'Lo. One of the few people that actually won, maybe the only person that beat Jeff Jarrett when Jeff Jarrett was the champion. It wasn't a title match, but he did beat him. And uh, Julio directing Alexis to come over and go! Oh, yeah. Pop the taste right out of Douglas's mouth. Oh, oh, nice 
Alexis will kick there by Alexis in another slam. Yeah, Alexis not afraid to get physically involved here with the franchise. And check this out. Julio's got the steel ring step. Well, you've got to give it to Alexis. She, she's not afraid of anything. Oh, great kick there by De Niro. Douglas lost his focus. De Niro off the ring steps and crashes into Douglas, who had nowhere to go. Back is first right into the safety rail. Mike, this has been so one-sided from the start. Shockingly so. Obviously, Raven has taught Julio and Alexis well. Yeah, and you can see the fire from Julio and Alexis representing their man, Raven, here against Shane Douglas. Uh-oh, fireman's carry. Douglas has got him up. Landed him across those steel ring steps. And it just takes something that simple to turn the momentum around. Alexis trying to cheer on her man. Trying to get Julio back into competition here in this match against the franchise. And Douglas rolls Julio back in. And again, this is a situation where I think we're seeing the gathering. Pulling out all the stops in an effort to please their man Raven to the ropes now the reversal Douglas sends Julio in and Julio ducks contact, oh, great but he move didn't duck that power slam great move there by Shane Douglas that was with authority pin attempt by Douglas off the power slam Julio kicks out at two you know not only did did you know Father Mitchell with, with Shane Douglas take out Raven two weeks ago he took out CM Punk last week he's not here tonight he's suffering from the fire burns and Julio taking control here it is beautiful move Follows up, catches it with a back elbow, drops down across Douglas. Both men back to their feet. Julio nails him with the right hand. Douglas sent off into the ropes, elevates him, caught him with the back body drop. And again, Julio just maintaining the offense. Take control. It's obvious that Douglas has had his mind set on Raven for so long. Two count and kick out by Douglas, barely that time. He never even was thinking about Julio. Thinking about how good Julio was in the ring. And he's paying for it, Mike, severely. Very little offense from the franchise, Shane Douglas. Super kick by Julio, who has dominated 95% of this match. Alexis up on the ring apron. Oh, no. Attempted the inverted atomic drop, and that time he caught him, and that time it was... That time it could have even uh, possibly been a low blow. Oh! And Alexis comes in and plants Douglas. Oh, she was just waiting for the opportunity, waiting to... And here's the pin! Here, here it is! Here's one! Here's two! two. Here's he got it. No! no, he didn't! Douglas Ooh. got the shoulder up! They've just thrown everything at Douglas! And the franchise has been awfully resilient, I'll, take it, I'll say that, and taken an awful lot of punishment. Oh, he's taking a beating out here! Oh! Clean oh. Julio into Alexis! A collision there! Oh, look at that! Plant him with the belly to belly, and... Bam! The match, the franchise, Shane Douglas. Look out, Father Jim Mitchell. No we, way. we know he has the association here with, with the franchise, Shane Douglas. Douglas pulling that victory out. Setting oh, him up no. for the fireball. No. Not, not a third straight week. Not a third straight no, week. Somebody get out here and stop this. First he burned Raven. Last week it was CM Punk. And now Father James Mitchell is... He's lining up Julio. Alexis going for the save oh. there. Trying to do everything to protect Julio. And Shane, oh, Shane Douglas fighting off Alexis. Look, look out. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh God. The, oh, God. The fireball right in the, right in the face of Alexis. Thank God Julio was there to you can come out there and stop it. You can, you can smell her hair burning. Oh, no. Look, Look at, at that, that evil Look at that sick reaction from both of them. Stand, stand by. Scott Hudson, I believe, is with Jeff Jarrett out in the back. Scott, if you can hear me, what a sick situation this is. Alexis is hurt. Scott, take it away. God. He's breathing. He's still breathing. He's still breathing. Let's go. Stop the damn thing. Come on. Stop the damn thing. Come on. Stop the the attack continues, we see Jerry Jerry out. Look at D'Lo! Did you, did you see D'Lo? D'Lo took Russo by the neck! Oh, Jerry, at least the friends have come out of the room!
Maddie. Someone. God. What a chaotic night this has been. What a chaotic situation. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Being accompanied to the ring by Ron Harris. Weighing in at 302 pounds. Heavy D. Harris brothers make their way down to the ring. Singles competition this week with Heavy D involved against an individual who certainly embarrassed both of them one week ago. And we take a look at the action that went down last Wednesday with the Harris brothers attempting the H bomb on Shark Boy. Shark Boy able to escape both Harris brothers as well as Mike Sanders. And Shark Boy stayed one step ahead and embarrassed the Harris Boys. And his opponent from 20 Falcon League, the this is Shark Boy. Well, he prevailed last week against Mike Sanders. But tonight it's a different story, Don. Well, uh, right now, Andrew Thomas in the ring is telling the Harris Brothers it can only be one. One only. Who's it going to be? Big Ron or Heavy D, what a choice you have to make. Well, JB announced Don Harris, so I'm, my presumption is that it's going to be Heavy D. Well, obviously someone should have told Ron that he's upset. And that's exactly the situation. Ron Harris still at ringside. Heavy D against Shark Boy. We don't need a tail of the tape to talk about a size discrepancy <laughs> and size advantage in this match, do we? I give Shark Boy all the credit in the world for getting out in the ring with these giants. I would estimate somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 100 pound weight advantage. Oh, I'd say more than that. I'd say 150. And Heavy D approaching yeah. 300 pounds, yeah. uh, at least 125 pounds. And this is, now this is about trying to gain some of that respect back from Shark Boy after he embarrassed both Harris brothers and Mike Sanders one week ago. And you know, Mike, they're going to try to do everything they can, not only just physically whip the tar out of him, but pull that mask off of his head. Yeah, that's, that's, if you think about it, it was a couple of weeks ago when Glenn Gilberti first mentioned about taking the mask off of Shark Boy, and, and ever since then, that's, that's really been their focus. That's what they've been trying to do. They've been concentrating on that. Sanders last week, and Heavy D this week, but I think before he takes off the mask, he wants to inflict some pain and punishment because they were so badly embarrassed a week ago. Oh, I love the quickness of Shark Boy, what a kick! That would be one of the advantages. The speed, the quickness, the agility of Shark Boy off the drop kicks, he ducks the clothesline. I'll tell you what uh -oh, though, one uh -oh. big clothesline from that guy and it's all over for Shark Boy. It might be all over right here. Yeah, Shark Boy committed himself, went airborne, caught by Heavy D. Amazingly enough, he shrugs him off, he rolls him up and gets a two count. Wow. Shark Boy trying an offensive move and Heavy D just stopped him with the knee. It's Shark Boy with the clothesline attempt. Oh, there now. You knew something's going to happen. Did you see Big Ron just pull him out of there like he didn't weigh a penny? Threw him into the rail. Shark Boy right. He had to know what he was getting into. Oh, you know it's been Ron trying to act like he was helping him back up. Yeah, they've got a game plan here, no question. Ron Harris positioning Shark Boy on the ring apron. Heavy D. Oh, God. The power. It just goes to show you they were thoroughly embarrassed last week yeah. by Shark Boy the getting out of their grasp. Power advantage here is just way too much. Don Harris just flinging Shark Boy into the steel safety rail. Now he's come over here by our broadcast position. Got a chair that he's tossed into the ring. Just flung it in the ring. And again, Big Ron has Shark Boy and throws him back in the ring. Back to the offense. Oh. It goes Heavy D. Drives that big right hand into the mask. What chance does he even have, Mike? Boy, very, Honestly, what very, chance very, does he very have? Very, very little, not only in a one-on-one -on -one match, but then factor in yeah. Ron Harris at ringside. Corner to corner by Heavy D, following up with the clotheslines in the corner. Oh, snapping back the neck of Shark Boy. Oh, look at that. That just shows you, though, the, the guts and the courage of Shark Boy wanting to impress 
TNA officials and what to impress the fans coming out here, but here it is. Sometimes, oh, he's trying to take the mask yeah. off. But we knew that was certainly their focus. They were going to concentrate on taking the mask off Shark Boy. And he, he's not going to let it happen. Listen to the chance from the crowd. Let's go, Shark Boy. By trying to fight back. Oh, look at that. Just stopped in mid move. Whoa, the force of Heavy D right there just flinging him down. Ron Harris with some words of wisdom. Going for the mask. I think, I think Ron Harris said, take the mask off. Unmask him. Are we going to see what Shark Boy looks like? Well, we thought we would a week ago, but he was able to escape both Sanders and both the Harris brothers. The crowd trying to cheer Shark Boy on somehow, some way. And now just toying with him, just having his way. Got him throttled. Looks like he was going to try and take him up for a choke slam. Shark Boy tries to fight back. And done! Oh, great move there! Driving the head down on the knee! Yes! Look at that! Dropped him down. Hangman's hey, neck breaker. I thought that was impossible just because of the size, size. difference. Great little kick there by Shark Boy. He's got to do something. If I was him, I'd get out of that ring. No? But look at that! He's going Instead, he's going to try and follow up this advantage that he has, and it's a momentary advantage. Corner mount, repeated shot. He's going for it again. Right back to it. You got to love Shark Boy. And I think Ron Harris is even frustrated now. Ron, get, Ron getting up here on the ring apron. Andrew Dunn. Shark Boy. Oh, he runs Whoa. Great job. Ron caught him unawares. Uh-oh. Heavy D's got him. Going to take him up. Whoa! Choke slam down. And the pin at back of this. The winner of the match, John Harris. Well, you know what's going to happen now. Yeah, this physical mismatch. No, wait a minute. It's going to be followed up by the H-bomb. H-bomb, they planted him. And now they're going to get the mask. They, There's no way he can fight both of them off. Trying to fight him, but there's just no way. You're right. He's got the mask. They got the mask off of him. He's got it. I'm going to take a look and see what... Right. He outsmarted him. <laughs> Shark Boy had a game plan. Now they see it. He had a mask underneath the mask. Oh, he somehow... He lost the match, but he won the war, Mike. And he's going to fish tail out of the ring again. As far as I'm concerned, Shark Boy's victorious. Shark Boy stays one step ahead of the Harris Brothers. All right, let's take a look at BG James, Ron the Truth Killings, and Conan. They call this the TNA Weekday Update. This is TNA Weekday Updates with three live crew. The news with B. Dizzle. With the sports, K. Diddle. And the weather with the suntan Superman. Trying to tell you about the weather. Good evening. Welcome to TNA Weekday Update. Our top story tonight. Shut the hell up. You're scratching over there. It's like a typewriter, supposedly. Our top story tonight. President Bush returning from his trip to Africa. He's still debating on whether to send troops into Liberia or not. And apparently, African food does not agree with the president. He was quoted at a press conference today at the White House as saying, and I quote, I've got the drizzles, my nizzles, end quote. That's what the president <laughs> said? My chisels, my nizzles, you got the drizzles. It's on your paper, too. Anyway, let's go to sports. Sports with Charles Ashcroft. K. Diddle in the middle. What's going on in the world of sports? Yo, Sammy Sosa was found with cork in one of his yes, bats. And in related news, Glenn Gilberti was found with a sock in his trunks. <laughs> oh, no. You knew I about that, right? Well, I saw it. Yo, the Kobe Bryant alleged sex scandal making headlines this past week. Rumors that the 19-year-old in question is Juventud Guerrero are completely unfounded. They're unfounded. Who, Juventud is not 19, he's 20 years old. And the man's dating, you know he's Kid dating. Romeo. Kid Romeo. Yeah, right. that's, I heard that's, that's no news. That's yeah. I heard. Anyway, Dusty Baker, in a related story somewhat, the Cubs manager was also quoted as saying that white people weren't as adapt to playing in the heat as, say, blacks and Latinos were. And the Dusty Baker was also... Whoo, it's hot in here. These lights. He was also quoted as 
thing. I can't breathe. Suntan Superman, help the cracker. Tell him the weather. Oh, it's tripping sometimes, man. It's kind of nippy in here to me. Anyway, nippy in here. Outside is hot. Outside is hot as hell. So let me tell you this right here. Learned this a long time ago from my daddy. Don't worry about my melomatologist board. It's in the shop getting fixed. When I get the board fixed, I get it back on there. Old family tradition. It's gonna rain. <laughs> it's gonna rain today? I ain't say it's gonna rain today. It's gonna rain. Everybody know that. <laughs> Why aren't you wearing the shirt? Why is it the Man, they said we didn't have to wear a shirt. We've been doing, I've been doing the weather, man, taking care of the weather stuff. My family, my brothers and nephews and, and all uncles right, take right, care of the weather. I see you. I got you. All right, okay. all right. Yeah, all right. Traffic all right, all right, conditions. All right, all right. Traffic yeah. conditions with the weather right now. It's like, it's messed up out there because it's fog and smog and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, on the way up here, we couldn't hardly see nothing. It's small fog, yo, yo, everywhere yo, around us, thick like fat back, yo. you know what I'm saying? Fog, the car, the fog see. was inside the car. That was what we meant. No, 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 no. On a more serious note, oh. ladies and gentlemen, we sat around earlier in the writer's meeting trying to find something funny to end off this show, and we came across this. <laughs> at at uh, Vengeance. This coming up Sunday, Stephanie McMahon versus Sable. Ladies and gentlemen, it just doesn't get any funnier than that. Thank you for watching. Weekday Update. To the top. This has been TNA Weekday Update. Zeno <laughs> Brown in the melee that just went down outside the asylum. We saw you with Vince Russo in the side headlock, pulling him away from Jeff Jarrett. Where is Vince Russo? Scott, it doesn't matter where Vince Russo is. All that matters is the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. All that matters is tonight I get a fair shot. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. About to make his way to the ring. From Johnson City, Tennessee, being led by the event. This is it. Well, that chaotic situation in the back certainly continued. As we see D'Lo Brown and AJ Styles go to blows, those are the two that will be battling later tonight with Styles putting the NWA World Heavyweight title on the line. Wow. But Styles' main concern was, what did D'Lo do with Vince Russo? We'll find out more about that, I hope. And his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 212 pounds, Terry. up the Jerry Land taking on Kid Cash. But keep your eye on that big scary dude named Abyss. I understand that Jerry Land had challenged Just Incredible to a last thing man standing match tonight and Just Incredible said no way wouldn't do it. So Jerry Land in the wrestling mode he's out here to take on Cash. One on one matchup certainly anticipating this bout but at the same time I'm I'm also going to keep an eye on Abyss down at ringside who's had that strange association with Kid Cash over the course of the past month or so. I'm still not sure, though, that Abyss is wired correctly all the way through, Mike, and, and you know, I don't know how, what kind of, how much loyalty he can really have. I mean, he's obviously been on Cash's side, but how much so, I don't know. Of course, Goldilocks was in the middle of this situation, but part of that power play by Vince Russo feeling that I guess Goldilocks was so condescending during interviews with, with AJ, AJ Styles that... Felt that she didn't respect the champion enough, and, well, when you've got, like you said, when you've got the belt, you've got the stroke. And, and she's not here. I mean, it's terrific to have Scott Hudson doing the interviews backstage here on TNA, but at the same time, it's, it just points out the power that Russo has now that Styles has the NWA World title. Terrific clothesline by Jerry Lynn. And again, just real quickly for those that might have missed it, D'Lo grabbed Vince Russo there when, when they were pummeling Jeff Jarrett and pulled him out of the picture. AJ came running in in that interview to try to find out where Russo was. D'Lo wouldn't tell him. 
Russo promising to be in the corner of AJ Styles tonight, and it was D'Lo promising that he would have a quote-unquote equalizer. <coughs> and that World's Heavyweight title matchup yet to come tonight in addition, the Hard 10 Trophy to be presented for the winner of the Hard 10 Tournament. That one week ago, Sandman victorious, and he'll get the Hard 10 Trophy as well later tonight. I'll tell you what, this is just a treat here for the fans here today because Lynn and Cass, two former X Division champions, two of the best in TNA, two of the you know MVP candidates in TNA in, in, the, in the last year. Yeah, if you really think about it, both Jerry Lynn and Kid Cash have been so dominant in the X Division. And this is an opportunity to prove which is the best of these two competitors. Side headlock to take over by Jerry Lynn. Use of the trunks that time by Kit Cash to try and get the shoulders of Lynn down, but only a two count. Smart move now by Jerry Lynn, maintaining the grip on that side headlock, not allowing Kid Cash to fly. Good move by Lynn. Oh, great move by Lynn right there. Yeah, to try and ground Kid Cash. Ah. Very similar in size, very similar in style, both of these wrestlers. Love their high-risk moves. Oh, man. Off the tilt to world backbreaker. Lynn hooks the far leg, and Lynn gets a two-count on Cash, who rolls out to the floor. Trying to obviously get a breather. He doesn't like the fact that Lynn is taking control of this match. But like you said, these two have so many similarities. We've seen Kate Cash do some phenomenal things from the top of the ropes. We've seen Jerry Lynn... Check out Take Abyss. on the best that there is. Wow, check out the size of this man. Dominant for the past year. What is he, 6'8"? Yeah, 6'8", 307 for the past year. Abyss dominant down in Puerto Rico for the IWA promotion. You know, he won uh -huh. all three of the oh, championships. Oh, by Jerry Lynn. Going underneath. Man, does he have to have eyes in the back of his head, Mike? Yeah, trying to stay one step ahead of Abyss, but at the same time, that allows Kid Cash to stop the offensive momentum of Lynn and certainly turn things around. Oh, great move by Jerry Lynn, he's got him! Quick roll up, and kick out that time by Kid Cash. Oh! Oh, the momentary oh. hesitation by Look Lynn cost him. Look at the power him. of Abyss! Look out right here in oh, front man. of us! Got him, up got, in that, him in the hole. got him up in the backbreaker! Oh, God, drops down! Look at that, I mean, that could have killed Jerry Lynn, you can see the pain on his face! This man just dominant for the IWA promotion in Puerto Rico, holding all three of the championship belts in the past year, defeating people like Scott Hall and Rick Steiner. Wow. And Abyss is making a name for himself and making his mark here in TNA. Change the momentum in a hurry as Kid Cash takes advantage of it, Mike. Here's the pin, legs hooked, and another two count. Uh-oh, we've seen the claw before. The move that he has coined the hand in the face. Yeah, pretty simple. The iron claw applied by Kid Cash to Jerry Lynn. And Jerry Lynn trying to fight it off, and look at the strength of Lynn. He bridges up oh. and breaks the claw with elbows to the midsection. Jerry Lynn, so impressive. Oh, wow. Remember, he swore he'd be a more aggressive Jerry Lynn, and that's what he's been from the day he started. The fact that he would even come out here and take on Cash with Abyss in the corner shows you how aggressive he is, Mike. And doing quite well as Jerry Lynn before... Oh, able to duck the clothesline that time as Cash tried to come back. Drives him down face one. Here's the pin two. attempt. And another two count for Jerry Lynn on Kid Cash. Very, very competitive matchup. And I think really the one thing that gave the advantage back to Kid Cash was the illegal interference by Abyss. Oh, absolutely. Oh, man! One of his patented moves that Jerry Lynn was waiting for, Mike! Right, referee down as well. Looked like Jerry Lynn was uh, possibly going to go for a cradle pile driver there. Stopped by Cash with a low blow. I think maybe Cash's foot clipped the referee right there in the face, it looked like to me. TKO by Lynn, but referee not in a position to make the count. Abyss. Climbs into the ring, big clubbing blow to the back of Lynn. The referee still trying to get his bearings there. They're being hit in the face. Oh, man. Uh, Jerry, you're going to have to... Oh, no, look at that. It's like hitting a wall. Yeah, zero impact with the clothesline. Going to try it again. Oh, he even tried to kick back at him. Like... A drop kick in the wall. Airborne goes in, and it's the DDT. 
that enables Jerry Lynn to finally take the big man down. He had to get the momentum there off the ropes and somehow break that barrier. Oh, wait a minute. No. Abyss up on the middle rope. Lynn charges in. Oh, he Snapped off the hurl of Kanrana. Took that one out of Keith Cash's playbook. You can see, I don't think you can see with Lynn Charles. One eye is almost closed. Wow. 6 8 3 0 7 of Abyss. Oh, wait a minute. Cash has the... got him. Backslide attempt. Reversal. Oh, just that's in. Incredible. Kendo sticking hand. Just when Lynn was going to go for the cradle pile driver. Oh no, Rudy Charles pin in. No! Oh. Over the match. Just incredible. Proves the difference. Let's take a look at a video package on the ace in the hole. Let's take a look at Sonny Siaki. From the Isle of Style, 250 pounds of Samoan power. The name, Sonny Siaki. But you could call me Ace in the Hole. The move, Siakulous now. No more cocky Siaki. Just Ace in your face. Ladies and gentlemen, in the history of professional wrestling, there are very few individuals that you can classify as a true hardcore legend. Off the top of my head, I think of the Sheep. I think of Abdullah the Butcher, and I think of Terry Funk. But in the opinion of many people, the man who one week ago was victorious winning the Hard 10 tournament has joined that group as a hardcore legend. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Sandman. Well, when you think of a hard 10 champion, Sandman is your guy. This guy has been hardcore his entire life. You look it up in the dictionary, it's his picture that you see. The very first ever hard 10 champion, Sandman. Sandman, you did it. You not only survived that hard 10 tournament, you thrive because last week you defeated New Jack and congratulations, the Hard 10 Cup is yours. How does it feel to be the first ever Hard 10 champion? I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I can see that. I've got to ask you this. What plans do you have for the Hard 10 Cup? Is this one going to go maybe on the mantle above the fireplace? Hey, hey, there's only one thing that I think that this cup should be doing. And that's having a beer drank out of it. <laughs> and the crowd agrees. How appropriate. And one thing about that cup, it'll hold quite a few beers. Sandman doing his patented share the beer with everybody. Hey, it's his cup. He can do with it what he wants. And the crowd loves it. <laughs> Well, we know one thing, that's at least a 40-ounce cup. I was going to say, it took three beers easily. Mike, I can even partake with the Sandman. I'll tell you what, we'll do that post-show tonight. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't walk over here, then, before you would have told me that. Wait a minute. What the hell? Who is this? What in the world? 
this big God, loser I'm... in the suit in the ring. Oh, I know this guy. That's Don Callis. That was Cyrus in ECW. Oh, look at the beating this big guy is putting. Well, Sandman, it seems like you're still the same pathetic, drunken piece of garbage. You were the last time I saw you. They were both in ECW. You just don't get it, do you? Well, let me introduce to you the 500-pound animal who just squashed you like a bum in the streets that you are. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 500 pounds of Edward Chastain. Edward Chastain. That's Mr. Chastain to you and I. You know that, man? You just don't get it. Hardcore wrestling in this company, over. Your little run with this pathetic cup, over. And it gives me great pleasure to announce that once and for all, your godforsaken career is over. Shut up. It's over for you. Go back to the street where you belong in the gutter, you stinking degenerate. Whoa, big man, big man, big man. Let's try to act a little bit corporate here. I've got a much, much better use for that garbage can. Check this out, he's putting Wait. rubber gloves on. Doesn't want to soil his hand. Crowd uh, voicing their opinion of this situation. And Mr. Chastain puts the boost to Sandman. Wow. You see, hardcore wrestling and this disgusting, filthy cop trophy are just like you, Sandman. Garbage! Wow. Don Callis and 500-pound Edward Chastain making their mark. Let's take a look at Behind the Paint with Sting, part two. Let's start off with favorite opponent. Ric Flair. Favorite match, specifically? There's more than one. If you can narrow it down to one. Probably Great American Bash, 1990. Dusty Rhodes. One of the most charismatic, if not the most charismatic wrestler ever. Eric Bischoff. Um, I know what I want to say. I'm just trying to think of short terms to put it in. Um, you just, you got to give credit where credit is due, period. I mean, people rip him up too, but you know what? Bottom line is he, he's the one that got Nitro going and uh, in the beginning he was a huge part of its success. Roddy Piper. Uh, talented, talented character. Bret Hart. Great finishing hole. The Ultimate Warrior. Very bizarre. Vince McMahon. Best chess player of all time. Wow, tough to top that for an answer. Hulk Hogan. Best chess player of all time. <laughs> <laughs> one and one A? Uh, there no, there'll never be another Hulk Hogan. The Michael Jordan of wrestling is Hulk Hogan. Randy Savage. Uh, one of my one of my favorite characters of all time. What are your thoughts on the impact that the internet has had on professional wrestling in the past couple of years? Uh, you know, it, it's good and bad. It, it really is. It just um, I, I really stopped paying attention to the internet, um, even when most everybody was writing you know really good things about me. There's there's always going to be those that just want to rip you up. And you know, there's so many people, and every now and then somebody will say, hey, did you hear what so-and-so said? And they'll, they'll read me this little thing that they got. And it's just like, 
they just rip and tear it to shreds so many of the, so much of the time and it's like the people that do that and some of them just that's the only thing they know how to do is just to rip it up it's like why do you watch why do you watch you watch it because you love it so start talking positive about it the final edition of Monday Nitro actually I had some tears in my eyes because the last match uh, maybe forever with uh, Ric Flair and I knew it at the time and I knew that you know maybe this was the end period This is the time allotted for the world heavyweight champion AJ Styles. But as you can see, this is not AJ Styles. Trinity, where's the champion? Yeah. You know, AJ is not in a talking mood, but I am. Not that you deserve to talk to Trinity. Well, you've, you've got some questions to answer, especially involving Vince Russo. No, listen, Scotty, not too hotty. I don't owe you an explanation. And I certainly don't owe the fans any explanation. You know, I come here week after week for months, busting my butt, putting my body on the line. Heck, I do things that men can't even do. You know, what, to be unappreciated? Well, you know what? I don't need to prove myself to this company and that nobody kid cash. And I certainly don't need to prove myself to the fans anymore. I used to think that I needed the crowd's approval and their cheers. And that was until Vince Russo made me realize it's not all about that. He made me realize what it's really all about, and that's me. I mean, why wouldn't it be? I mean, look at me. Like you have a chance. I mean, I got the body, the brains, and even the muscles if I need them. But you know what? I don't need to get my hands dirty anymore. You see? Vince has much bigger plans for me. And you know what? I'm just about done talking to you nobodies anyway. Wait, hey, D-Lo, you want to play hide-and-go-seek with Vince? You just about mess with the wrong people because you're about to meet up with a well-renowned New York attitude. And by the way, hi, Goldilocks. Let's go back to the ring. No, let's go back to the broadcast table and yet to come tonight. AJ Styles to defend the NWA World Heavyweight title against D'Lo Brown, who's promised the equalizer. Don, one week from tonight, Raven will return to TNA, but that's not all. Just Incredible and Jerry Lynn are going to settle it all next week in a last man standing match. And for all you fans, you love the Shark Boy, him and New Jack are going to team up against the Harris Brothers. And if there's any way, shape, or form that Jeff Jarrett is okay, he will take on the legend all that and Raven in action next week. That's next week. It's world title time tonight on TNA. And we're going to go to the tail of the tape as we break down the champion and challenger in this World Heavyweight Championship matchup. And as you look at the numbers, you'll see the obvious size advantage for the challenger, D'Lo Brown, in addition to the experience edge that he has. Teacher versus student because they're former tag team partners. Russo versus the Equalizers, what we've been promised. Will it be the style clash or will it be the lowdown with a new world heavyweight champion? And here is the challenger. D'Lo Brown, a man who certainly deserves this title shot, Don. Absolutely, Mike Tanae. This guy has been fantastic from the moment he showed up at TNA. The crowd loves him. He's earned it, and in fact, he's earned it for the fact that AJ turned on him weeks ago. D'Lo's got his chance for some revenge. Yeah, I think back two weeks ago, that impromptu cage match between these two with Russo's repeated interference. And here's the champ. that this man, the phenomenal AJ Styles, captured the NWA World Heavyweight title, winning a three-way match over Jeff Jarrett and Raven when Vince Russo's guitar shot led to AJ Styles' style clash on Jarrett. What a history between these two over the course of the past couple of months.
months on, and it finally comes to a head tonight with the World Heavyweight title at stake. Wrestling Alliance in cooperation with Total Nonstop Action Entertainment Incorporated. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Andrew Thomas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the world famous TNA Asylum in Music City, USA, it's time for your NWA Heavyweight Championship bout of the evening. First of all, the challenger. Kelly from Chicago, Illinois, he weighs in at 280 pounds. And is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. This is Delo. an equalizer as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Gainesville, Georgia, he weighs in at 215 pounds and is the current reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Scott. Wait a minute, Gilo's grabbing the mic. Before we get this party started, I'm going to make this short and sweet. For the better part of a year, Vince Russo's been running around here like a rooster in heat. And I told you I was going to have an equalizer in my corner. But you know what? I'm just going to show it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my equalizer. Who's it going to be? And wait a minute. I, security? I guess, what's it going to be should have been the question. Yes. There's the equalizer. Russo's in the small cage! Yeah, the weasel cage, appropriately enough. Oh! And look at Russo trying to fight to get out of that cage. See, red shirt security bringing the quote-unquote equalizer out to the ramp. AJ trying to get him out. AJ, you don't have time for that. Oh! you got a heavyweight match. Yeah, you can't lose your focus at this point in time. We'll see what kind of a champion AJ is. He's going to have to redirect his thoughts immediately, Mike. He doesn't have Russo there to help him. Well, that's, that's the that, equalizer. That, that is the equalizer because it is one on one now. And whatever game plan that Styles and Russo may have concocted has backfired on him. Nice trip by Styles. Takes Zelo down, but Zelo quickly able to avoid the elbow drop. Keep in mind, these two know each other very well. They were great tag team partners for a lot of weeks, dominated in the tag team for so long. To the power game, we pointed out the size advantage that D'Lo Brown has. You see how AJ countered that though, got the arms up to keep that leg from smashing into his face? They know each other like the back of their hand, Mike. Looks like respect on the face of AJ Styles. As he was sent into the corner by D'Lo Brown, you're right, teacher versus student. One of the most impressive tag teams that we really have seen here in TNA in recent months. That for whatever reason, and, and probably the fact that Vince Russo was the wedge between them. But, I mean, even think back to when they had that number one contenders match back in early June. That's when we first saw that dark side of AJ Styles. Well, he had the black heart, Mike, and he would wanted to do anything it took to become the heavyweight champion. He said it, he did, and he is. And now he will do anything within his power to maintain that hold on the championship. D'Lo Brown, what an incredible move. Power move by D'Lo as Styles crashes down to the canvas. Measuring him is D'Lo Brown. Coming smart. out. Yeah, smart move by Styles. Styles off the oh, right into the rail. Speared him right into the steel. As AJ was trying to walk away, D'Lo just timed it perfectly. Didn't do an unnecessary dive or anything. He just timed it right into the rail. And this really has to be driving Vince Russo nuts. The fact that he's so close, right on top of the situation, right on top of the scene. And Russo can do nothing about it, and Styles, who slid underneath, that's Kelly. Oh, nowhere to slide there. Impact of the clothesline from D'Lo Brown takes the champ down. That's the teacher right there teaching the student, Mike. 
AJ thought he escaped it, but Dino Brown didn't stop his pursuit. When they were a tag team, we saw both of these wrestlers add so many new moves. Oh, look at the weight. Just like that, diving headbutt, slingshot in, and pin attempt for a two count. You know, D'Lo also expanded his offense as we see Russo looking on, stuck in the weasel cage. Great agility there by AJ Styles. Oh, look at Brown. Here's the pin by D'Lo. Here's one. Here's two. Mike, it's obvious to me that AJ is not the same person right now. With Russo, he, he, his mind's on Russo in the cage, and you know, AJ doesn't need to be that way. He's phenomenal. We've seen what he can do. He needs to focus or he's going to lose that championship tonight. Styles with the drop kick to the knee of D'Lo to try and take him oh, down. Look at that. Takes him over with the Hurricane Rana. Styles quickly to his feet, the sweep kick. The spin heel kick takes down D'Lo. Yeah, you're right, but just the fact that D'Lo has that equalizer. Russo in that small cage up on the ramp. I think what we're seeing here is that it's taken AJ Styles, at least to this point in time, completely out of his game. So Styles was going to fly, but put on the brakes. Well, he sided against can, it. You can see the cockiness kind of coming back to him. Oh, beautiful move by the champion AJ! And he landed on his feet! Did you see that? That's why he's the champion! He's the boy, if there's any way that we can take another look at that, we have to see this. Look Check at this! this. Out. Doing the high jump yes. in the Olympics. Yes, Shades of the Fosbury flop, if you can remember the Fosbury <laughs> flop. Thank you. Wow. Talk about adding new moves to your offensive arsenals. Just what we saw from the champ. <laughs> that was phenomenal. Fired off into the corner. Styles. Oh, oh the power of D'Lo Brown. What a counter. What a reversal by D'Lo. The double leg with authority drives the champ down and the challengers looking for a second win. And you can shake that cage all you want, Russo. I'll tell you right now. Slugfest between the two. D'Lo Brown needs to do exactly what he just did. Use his weight to his advantage. Keep slamming AJ to the mat every time you can to knock the win out of him. You just talked earlier about how well they know each other. Did you see D'Lo get his hands up? to block the kick and then immediately follow up the offensive. Oh, he's just giving it to him one after another right now. A pair of running clotheslines by D'Lo. They're down with the Brown. Here's the TNA oh. Asylum. Oh. Oh. the extension. AJ hit the ground from about 12 feet in the air. Man. Tremendous elevation. Look First at the back body drop. Oh. That time, he did go to the power game. That time, he just tossed AJ down. Just overpowered him. Follows up with the leg drop. And here's the pin. Our leg hook. No. no. Russo. Russo looking up. And I think Trinity just walked right by Russo. Can we get a shot of that? Here yes, she is. is. Trinity walked right by Russo on the ramp. Immediately comes into the ring. Oh, beautiful. Move there by Trinity. And Dino's down. Twisting move. Oh, no. no. Not this way. No. no. Nice outfit, though, by Trinity. As Russo just absolutely frustrated in the cage. Styles fires off those right hands. D'Lo stops. Uh-oh. Put on the brakes, D'Lo. No contact with referee oh, Thomas. Oh, kick. Oh, referee Andrew Thomas nailed with the Injigiri kick. down and out. What's this? Sonny Siaki? Oh, wait a minute. What does he have? I just hit him with a cane of some sort. Deal cane. Oh, Siaki. A lift by Siaki. Oh, I... Coming to the aid of Russo. Uh, I guess that answered some of the questions we've yeah. had about Siaki's yeah. allegiance. That's right. Well, he said he was looking to... Here it goes. Oh, oh. frog splash off the top by the champ. Yes, he retains the NWA 
Heavyweight World Heavyweight title. But think of the interference on the part of Trinity, on the part of Sonny Siaki. That was the difference maker in my opinion. Oh yeah, AJ needed the help. Totally out of control! Styles retains the NWA title! We're back now! 